fuel filters for carbureted engines. And there's a topic you never hear talked about. Because it, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's the reality for all of us. We've all got some sort of fuel filter someplace in our fuel system. But I'm currently going through the fuel system on Plan Z, getting that thing ready. And I have my box of trinkets and odds and ends out. And as I'm digging through, looking for fittings and whatnot, I have a bunch of various fuel filters in there. So I says, let me do a quick video on this. Because, you know, like I says, we all have them. It's, it's reality. So, let's start with the most basic, the plastic inline throwaway filter. So this has been the standard for the last 60 years or so, for just a regular everyday car, inline filter. These things work great. I like them because you can see through them, but they have their limitations. You know, you don't want to put them in an area where they're subjected to any sort of violence or anything like that. And they shouldn't be used in anything, any sort of modified fuel system that's operating at more than, let's say, 5 PSI. 6 PSI tops. Um, because they will eventually fatigue, balloon, and rupture. But for the typical car, the typical, you know, daily driver, restoration type of Sunday afternoon car, these things work fine. Nothing wrong with them. But they are throwaways. All right. These metal filters. So now let's say you've, you've pumped this up and you've got six or seven PSI. You definitely want to maybe upgrade to a metal filter. The problem with these things is that you can't see what's going on inside. So if you've got a suspected fuel system issue and, you know, you're like, okay, let me see if the filter, let me see if there's any fuel getting up to the carburetor or let me see if there's any gack in the system. Well, unless you're Superman, you can't see through the metal filter. So you inevitably have to take it off and blow through it. Nothing wrong with them. I really like these when the filter is in an area where it may be subjected to rocks or road debris if you run it under the car in line let's say from the tank to the pump someplace under the car this is the way to go but like i says the limitation with this is that you can't see through them all right now there's a second type of metal filter and that's this one here this is an orifice style filter so as you see it has a fuel line in a fuel line out and it also has this third nipple and that third nipple has a tiny hole in it it's it's a it's a you would use like a quarter inch fuel line on that but it doesn't actually flow a quarter inch inside there's a little hole in there it's i don't know probably 40 30 or 40 thousandths of an inch in diameter and what that is is that's a vapor separator line now i did a whole video called the eight dollar cure for vapor lock and this is exactly the type of filter actually i think this is the filter we used on that video so where you want to use these is on a car that's prone to vapor lock a mechanical fuel pump engine that's prone to vapor lock now why i say mechanical fuel pump because most vapor lock as you're driving down the road most vapor lock that you encounter today is going to be from the fuel boiling inside the pump all right the pump is going to operate at the same temperature as the engine so let's just say it's uh the motor is at 210 220 degrees well today's gasolines don't have that anti-boil protection and so the pump at 220 degrees is starting to boil that fuel and create a vapor lock situation what this does is it allows the vapor to escape through that orifice and keep the motor running so you would want to plumb this back to some place at the back of the car you'd want to plumb this let's say you want to tee in uh, at that rubber connection between the tank and the metal fuel line of the car or if your tank has a vapor line on it this is where you want to attach it to it takes a little time and a little energy a little effort to run a line all the way to the back of the car but trust me when i tell you you're sitting in traffic on a summer day this thing will it's worth its weight in gold it will keep you running it, it will not help vapor lock from a carburation source so if you're boiling the fuel inside the carburetor this isn't going to do you any good but i'm telling you most vapor lock situations that you find with vintage cars it's happening in the fuel pump so that's something i'm telling you where it's worth its weight in gold in the right circumstance 
All right, now these glass filters, a lot, a lot of people give, you know, like, ah, oh, you can't use that. It's going to break. It's going to shatter. It's going to burn your car down. Listen, since the beginning of the internal combustion engine, they have been using glass filters and glass water separators in fuel systems with no problem at all. These things aren't that fragile. You can't just, like, it's not like a light bulb. You can't just, like, tap it, you know, and, and, it, and it shatters. They're tough. If they do leak, it's generally because they're not tightened completely. So there's a little rubber O-ring in there that, as you tighten the two ends, creates a seal. They don't break. I have never seen one of these things break. Now, that said, I wouldn't put one under the car or in an area where it's subjected to maybe getting rocks thrown at it. But if you've got typical fuel system and you're going to run this between the pump and the, uh, and the carburetor, they're fine. You will never have a problem with that thing. The plus side, there's, there's a couple of plus sides to these. The first is that the filter elements are easily replaceable. It, on the side of the road, boom, in and out. Uh, and obviously it's see-through, so you can see the condition of your fuel system and whether or not you've got fuel getting up to the carburetor. I love these things. I use them on a bunch of my cars. Never, ever, ever had a problem with them. So, and also, they're not subject to fuel pressure issues. So if you've got, like, let's say, an electric pump and you're up at the seven, seven and a half pound range, these things are fine. You'll never have a problem. So don't discount these. I like them. I mean, if, if, if you're afraid, if you're that paranoid of the glass, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Throw a metal one in there. All right, so now we get into, into something that I use as fuel filters. It isn't actually intended to be used as a fuel filter, but these things work fantastic. And it's a nitrous fuel system. So Nitrous Express, all, all of the nitrous manufacturers. This one's from Nitrous Outlet. This one's Nitrous Express. They sell these inline nitrous filters. And these things are intended to go right off the bottle. And you, so, so you attach one into the bottle and the other into the line in the car, and they catch any impurities that might be in the nitrous. And that's their intended use. But for a high-flow, high-performance fuel system that you want a replaceable element, these things are great. So inside of them are, let me open this up. Inside of these is a stone-style filter, okay? It's, uh, what is it? It's actually porous, sintered bronze. And this is exactly the material that they used, let's say, on uh, quadrajets. You know, the, the screw-in fuel filter that went right into the carburetor. That's the same material that was used. They're high flow. They're eternally cleanable. You can you just hit this thing with, with brake clean. And any impurities or anything like that, they'll, they'll flush right out. They're bulletproof. You can mount this anywhere in the car, and they'll take any amount of pressure. They're intended to take nitrous pressure. So 8 or 10 pounds of fuel pressure, no sweat for these things. If you're going to run a big fuel pump, and you're going to run it before the regulator, the, the, fuel, the filter before the regulator, this is, this is, I guess, they don't sell them for this purpose, but they work for this purpose, and they work great. I've been using them on and off in different cars for years. They're expensive. So but it's a one-time purchase. Also, beware when you, if you buy one of these things new, if you come across one on a swap meet or anything like that, and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to use that kind of filter. Be aware that they come in two different sizes. There's the one that's, that's opened up for the number four line, which is typically that's used on nitro systems, and then there's the ones that are opened up for a number six line, which is was typically used in a, a, a standard carbureted fuel system. So you want to use the number one that's sized to take a number six line. And also, if you go to Home Depot or any place like that and you go to get the fittings, the, the pipe style fittings that are going either end, make sure that before you put these things in line that you drill them open to match the rest of the fuel line because these are slightly undersized. If you're using a 3 8 inside diameter line, these things are slightly under 3 8 diameter. So make sure you drill the center of them out and also chamfer them after you've drilled them to keep your flow up. So, and this is a type that I use in, in Plan Z, and I've got one in Bottle Rocket also. They work really good. Not for everybody, though. Then you get to the end of the rainbow, and you've got a high-pressure, high-flow fuel system. 
So let's say instead of using a regulator, you're using a return style system, and you're running, let's say, E85 and a big volume pump. At this stage of the game, you need to step up to something like this, which, ironically enough, aren't as expensive as these nitrous filters, but it's a different purpose. So for these, this, this one is a Barry Grant. There's a bunch of different styles of them, but these filters use something very, a paper filter, a, a corrugated paper filter, very similar to an oil filter, and these things work great. So E85 return style fuel system, big high volume, high flow systems, this is the type that you want to use. I think I covered everything in the world of, well, I mean, it's, it's not that complicated a, a subject. You know, but they, they do come in all different shapes and sizes, and I think I, I covered the common applications. So, I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.